In the previous video, we've looked at what we call the Young Modulus, which is for each material like steel, copper, brass and things like that. But how do we determine the Young Modulus of a material? Well, that's what we're going to find out in this video today. So here, very funny thing, right? this suddenly uh, CIE wants you to be able to describe an experiment. Wow, you might think, uh, Miss, isn't experiment supposed to be in paper tree for lab practical? Well, yes, you can do it in paper tree. But for this chapter, this experiment, you need to be able to describe it in words, like writing an essay, drawing a picture or something like that. So maybe you have like one uh, part of your question where you turn on the first page, oh, you can't really see it anyway. You turn on the first page and it's like a whole bunch of empty lines for you to write the experiment out. Oh my. So it's good practice because in the future, after you're done with AS, uh, paper, paper 5 is an experiment paper where you have to describe experiments by writing lots and lots of sentences, drawing pictures and things like that. So think of it as good training. So let's see, what's the experiment about? Okay. First one. There's actually two ways we can determine Young Modulus. One of it is this one. It's what we call Cyril's apparatus. You know, I honestly don't know how to pronounce his name properly or her name properly. So here, you just need a beam, fix a part on top, and a control wire on the left side. Just focus on the left side first. Okay, this is the control wire. Oh my, my... <laughs> squiggly lines uh, so first you need a control wire to and keep it straight and that's uh, kept straight with the weight down here below okay because it's just a reference uh, to hold straight then the reference scale the scale is fixed somewhere in the middle with very small markings like a vernier vernier scale ruler kind of stuff so the control wire is the first part then the second part is the root the wire where you want to measure the young's modulus okay this wire you want to find what is the Young's modulus? This one, you hang it next to the control wire. It has to be about 2 meters in length, okay? So that you can actually see the extension. This will be very long. And then, you need to also put a vernier scale on this side to measure the change in length when you add loads to the hanger down here. Okay, so you need to add a length of wire, you need to add a scale, and you need to add a hanger down there to put more weight so you can stack up more and more stuff here stack 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 so what's happening is let's say this is the con no let's say this is the control wire this is the wire i want to measure the young's modulus and there's a reference marker which is like my thumb so if the wire gets stretched a bit then you move down a bit <coughs> exaggerated stretch some more hang some more look it go down some more <coughs> so you will see like that little vernier scale there uh, it will start to move a little bit. Well, we can't really do the experiment at home. Okay, anyway, just this, this one is for you to know. There's this apparatus called Sears apparatus. There is another one, which is more doable in labs. And, um, well, I don't... No, we want, we're not doing this semester. But the other one is the one where it's better to describe So because you don't need all this special reference scale thing. Because not all labs have this special stuff here. So there's another one. And let's take a look at that method. So this one is based on normal lab equipment that we can see. Because firstly, you need to clamp, uh, you need to clamp the wire here. Here they use two blocks on the right side. So they're clipping the wire so it doesn't slip, have to be very tight. In other words, you said you gap the wire there. Gap basically means you clamped it there. Then you run the wire down over a pulley and hanging over the side of the table and with the load on this side. So the load is going to exert a force or tension force, tensile force, that's a proper name, on the wire to pull it at a stress. To measure the strain, you have this reference marker. It can be a piece of paper or whatever, lah, this thing, reference marker, that is pointing at a fixed scale, like a, a, a ruler or something like that. So this fixed scale. So that is the setup of the experiment. Okay. Um, I think that's all. Okay. So what, what, how are you going to measure this thing? Well, first, you're going to measure the original length of the wire. So maybe you just look at the reference scale. Before you hang any load, what is the original length? 
including the top part all the way down what's the length ah so that's like for example L0 lah L0 original length then you also must measure diameter because in Young's modulus you need to measure diameter right because Young's modulus is stress over strain which is a whole bunch of stuff force area length and extension so you're going to need to measure all these quantities in this experiment so you measure diameter maybe at a few points here 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 use a micrometer screw gauge those those g-shaped things to clip the wire and measure it why do we make it multiple sides because then you can find diameter here diameter here diameter here diameter here and take the average of the diameter at all spots because you may have realized if you ever use a micrometer that you measure let's say the diameter of a pen at this point and this point is slightly different ah so that difference ah, is quite random and you need to you want to account that because the better data you have the better marks you get okay then you need to add masses or loads to hanger like the previous experiment you make the force here on the left side bigger and bigger so you add the stress on the wire and it will strain by extending so extension then once you're extended you measure the final length maybe this thing has moved down a little bit so you measure what is this length l means you have some extension here already from l0 extend a bit become l how do you analyze the data let's look so once you got your data down you may write a table like this you don't have to describe this part in paper too but if you actually did the experiment you would make a table something like that probably choose six values i don't know maybe choose 0 0.1 100 grams 200 grams i don't know choose whatever values measure the change in length okay how many uh let's say original is one meter i'm just creating values here then it become 1.01 okay so i should put this 1.00 1.04 and 1.05 and then so and so forth so these two are the raw data that you will collect okay l you also have diameter which is raw data i'm just going to put a blank here and then once you have your raw data what you need to do is you need to analyze your uh data that you have collected so you need to find the load calculate extension load is basically m times g la. so you just m times g then you need to count extension how much each thing increase so you need to do original length uh final length minus original length and then you calculate everything then you'll need to plot a graph of all your values. Okay, so you calculate, 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 calculate. What graph? Well, you could plot F over X, or you could plot stress over strain. Now, different references or different books may tell you to do different things. You can do both. If you plot the graph of stress over strain, and you get a, a line, I mean, oh, well, you should get a line. Your data might be all over the place. But you get a line the gradient will straight away be Young's modulus. But if you plot f over x, it might be a little bit harder, but let's do the harder one here. Okay, if you plot f over x and you fit your line, you need to find the gradient. Okay, so you remember how to find gradient. Oh, right. You pick two points, draw a triangle here and here, and you find your gradient. M is change in y over change in x. Okay, find gradient. Then you need to use your gradient, M, to calculate E. How do you do that? This is the part where a lot of people often forget how to do. Because uh, if you just do stress over strain, easy. Gradient is Young's modulus. That. But if it's F over X, uh, how do you find? Uh? Okay, okay. So you need to remember, Young's modulus equation, the extended form can be uh, force per unit area and then divide by strain, so length over X. So here we have what's on our y-axis. We have force on our y-axis and we have extension on our x-axis. Oh, that's convenient. So you need to rearrange this equation to be the pattern of y equals to mx. So I'm going to rearrange to fit this pattern. y equals to mx. Is there a plus c? Ideally, no. But experimentally, if you have uh, systematic errors, you will have a plus c. Anyway, so we rearrange this. You will have f equals to e times a over wait let me just do e a x over l okay that's easier then what is our x axis 
x axis is just extension so e a over l zero times x so that means this is my gradient m so if i find some value for m on the right side here already i can equate that to this value here e a over l and use that to calculate e so i'll just rewrite here gradient is e a over l and this is a skill that you must have for all kinds of labs if they give you an equation can you rearrange it so that you can use your gradient to find whatever value they want you to find okay here we want to find e right so you need to equate like your gradient number equals to e a over l okay so that's how you can find the gradient from a graph like this that's just a short peek of what to do or how to describe an experiment now you probably might not remember everything i just told you but that's okay there is a lab that i want you to do well lab but more like a virtual lab to do look out for information in the lab channel or if you are kind of lost or you're only watching the videos go to the description below to go straight to the form which will bring you to the worksheet well the form is the worksheet and go through the worksheet it's okay if you have no idea what you're doing just try your best to describe it's good practice just typing it out and if you click submit it will show you the solutions and mark schemes for each answer and you can go through that as a way of learning how to describe this lab because then if they ask you in the paper too like ask you kind of write all this kind of thing or then you at least have an idea of the main points now those things are based on past year questions so you will encounter them in past years but this work take this worksheet as a time worksheet as a time to learn how to describe this experiment in words okay so make sure you know how to do that you have to know how to do that in chapter 9 Next up, we will be looking. We'll be looking at the final section on graphs. Now, in this experiment and previously, we only look up to this orange point here, when the lines are straight. It's the same thing with uh, force extension graphs. We only look at where the object obeys Hooke's law. Here, we can also, in both cases, if we only look at this straight line or this straight line, we say the object obeys Hooke's law. But what if it goes beyond that? You see, in this case, there's something very weird here. The, the, the line is kind of curvy, there's a little dip, and then finally breaks. That is the final part of this chapter. We're going to see how to interpret graphs to, that show you the behavior of metal. When you stretch until it breaks, like my guitar string, stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch until it breaks, what, how does the extension, how does the stress and strain, how do the forces relate to each other? Okay. Just remember, if you want to find Young's modulus, you can only look at this area. Or this gradient where the object obeys Hooke's law. That's all for this uh, experiment video. Go try out the worksheet, watch the Cambridge video and learn more about the experiment.